Sam my dudes, Sen Salmond here, and with E3 fast approaching, I really wanted to talk about some more Smash Bros characters that I wanted to see added into the game. Last time E3 was on, we got Hero and Banjo announced, so I could really see the final two characters getting revealed in this presentation. So I figured before the last two characters probably get announced, I want to talk about some more characters I really want to see. I figured I'd talk about seven characters again, just because I did it last time. I'll be going in order from my least most wanted newcomer, ending with my most wanted character. However, like I said, I've already done one of these videos before, and some of these characters actually now outrank some of the characters on my old list, while there's still a few that I don't want as much as the characters on my first list. But let's not dwell on rankings too much, and just focus on the characters, starting with the first one. Or should I say the first three? So a few weeks after seeing the Pokemon Legends Arceus trailer, I kind of thought, huh, what if you got a new Pokemon trainer character based on Legends? Since I've gotten this whole game not really wanting another Pokemon rep, but now I'm kind of like, yeah, it'd be alright if we got this. It'd effectively be like the Pokemon trainer we already have in the game, but with three different Pokemon, which would drastically change up the moveset. And of course the trainers would be different too. It'd be cool since we have the Legends Boy and Girl trainers be the first two costumes, Diamond and Pearl Lucas and Dawn being the f costumes 3 and 4, Platinum Lucas and Dawn being costumes 5 and 6, and maybe like Barry and Cynthia for costumes 7 and 8. But of course the part you really want to see is the Pokemon. Since you play as them, not the trainers in Smash. To start things off with the lightweight Pokemon, we're sticking with the water type, and it's actually my favourite starter in total. The sea otter Pokemon, Oshawa. Oshawa's the main reason that the Legends trainer got onto this list. I'd be really happy with Duart and Samurott too, but Oshawa's the main one I want to see. It would be the fast agile one out of the three, and use its scale chop to attack. I could see it with Aqua Jet for its up special, Scold for its side special, and Sacred Storms for its neutral special. Razor Shell would be its main form of attacking though, which it'd use for a lot of its regular attacks, aerials, and maybe a smash attack or two as well. I think if Duart and Samurott got in instead, their moveset would be kinda similar, just stronger and slower. I chose the Volcano Pokemon Quilava for the Midnight Pokemon, since he's the fire starter of Legends. I think unlike Ivysaur, he'd be a decent bit faster, but maybe has high launching power than Oshawa, but does a little bit less damage than Ivysaur. I think what would be cool is having Eruption for its neutral special, and like in the games, it would do more damage and have a higher launching power the more health you have, or I guess the less percentage you have, making it for a fantastic revenge kill move when someone takes a stock from you. Quilava gets Aerial Ace, so maybe that would be good for its up special? And finally we could go with something like Inferno for its side special, which like Oshawott's side special could burn the opponent and do some damage over time for a few seconds. Finally the last star of Legends is the Arrow Quill Pokemon Decidueye. With the lead up to Ultimate's release, Decidueye was a very highly requested character, with some people wanting Incineroar and others wanting Decidueye. I was on team Incineroar personally, so I'm glad they got in, but what if we could get both Pokemon playable? I do see Dartrix being playable, but with how popular Rowlet is in Japan, I could see us getting a combo of Rowlet, Duot, Typhlosion, or Rowlet, Quilava, and Samurott. But with the ghost typing, I think Decidueye would be the most interesting character out of its evolution line. I can see some insane combo material starting from this character. You could trap the foe with a neutral special Spirit Shackle, you turn out with a side special, and then switch to Oshawa or Quilava to build up the combo going. Finally, I think Phantom Force would be an extremely cool up special. I was thinking Brave Bird, but I figured Phantom Force would make for a more interesting move, instead of just a flying type Flare Blitz. Plus it helps emphasize on the ghost typing more. I can see its main attacks being a form of Leaf Blades, and possibly firing Seed Bombs from its arrows too. It'd be a lot slower than the other two Pokemon on this list, but could definitely hit hard and be tricky to deal with. Overall, while they still use the typings of Fire, Water and Grass like the other Pokemon trainer, Maybe using Pokemon of different types would be more interesting, I think these three have a lot to offer while we were using types, and I'd love to play as them if they ever got into Smash. Next up is a character that might be surprising for some of you considering how popular he is, yet he's so far down this list. Number 6 is the Star of Kingdom Hearts, Sora. I feel like Sora would be one of the most hype characters to reveal overall in the Smash community, and since we've already got a square rep with Sephiroth on this pass, and how hard it probably would be to negotiate adding him into the game, I really don't see him getting released this time around. But be an insane way to end off E3, revealing that the final character of Fighter Pass 2 is none other than Sora. Even with very little amount of Kingdom Hearts I've played so far, I'd be insanely hyped to have this character be playable. I've never been able to play the game before until now with a PC port, 
While I'm not that far into Kingdom Hearts 1.5 at the moment, I'm really enjoying it so far. I would love to see some Kingdom Hearts representation in Smash. If you've never played Smash Flash 2, Sora is a playable character in that game, and he's really fun to play. In the game, his neutral special is Strike Raid, which is very similar to Pyra's Prominence Revolt. Flow Motion is his side special, which is kind of confusing to me how it works, but I know Sora flies at the opponent, and it's very combo heavy. Command Deck is its down special, and Sora will either use Fire, Blizzard, or Thunder. And finally, his up special is Aerial Recovery, which is a fantastic up special that doesn't deal damage, but allows Sora to act into any other move aside from another Aerial Recovery. If Sora's moveset is anything like his Smash Flash 2 moveset, then he'd be a really fun character to play. If you haven't played him yet, then I'll leave a link to download the game in the description, since it would be a lot easier to play him than just hear me talking about him instead. I really want to see some more Zelda representation in Smash Bros. I've already talked about my most wanted Zelda character in the last Smash wishlist, but I really want a cool Zelda character added into the game. We haven't had a proper new Zelda character get added since Melee, which was literally heaven for Zelda fans. In one game, we got Zelda, Sheik, Ganondorf, and Young Link. And while we did get a new character with Toon Link in Brawl, he was kind of just like a replacement for Young Link, and added nothing different. And yeah, sure, Ultimate brought back Young Link, but we still haven't seen anything new Zelda-wise. I wish they at least reworked Young Link if they were going to bring him back, because they could have based him a lot more on his Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask move pool, and based all of his specials on each of the masks. So I was thinking who else I'd want from the Zelda series as a new fighter. And aside from my number one pick, my number two and three pick are pretty tied, but I'm just going to talk about one of them this time around, which is Midna and Wolf Link. We've seen them fight a lot within Twilight Princess and Hyrule Warriors too. With a unique combination of magic, large hair, and him, and wolf, it would definitely be a very interesting moveset. But it's different to the rest of the Zelda characters, and even to the rest of the cast. Midna can smash her opponents with a giant hand, and attack with some shadow magic too, using it to teleport and dodge opponents to attack. While Wolf Link assists her, and attacks with his claws and fangs, while bumping up her movement speed too. Maybe it could be like Hyrule Warriors, where Wolfling isn't always around with her, but she'll summon him when attacking, and it could change up her moves pool drastically, depending on whether he's summoned or not. I know Midna's an assist trophy, but I don't see why we can't get a character upgraded mid-game. People said spirits couldn't be promoted to characters in Ultimate too, yet here's Min Min, Pyra, and Mithra, who were all spirits beforehand, and now are playable. So as long as it's not Tingle or like Wind Waker Ganondorf or something like that, I'd be so down for almost any Zelda character. I just really want the series to get some more love and attention in Smash. These next few picks are honestly super unlikely, but I still really want to play as them in Smash at some point. And this next pick is Elfelt Valentine from the Guilty Gear series. The reason why she's so unlikely is that if we get a Guilty Gear rep, it's 100% Soul Bad Guy. And I don't even know if Elfelt would be considered if we somehow manage to get a second Guilty Gear rep one day too. I don't know how important of a character she is in Guilty Gear, since I've just played it a couple times, and I only really main her and Dizzy. But she hasn't even been announced for the latest game in the series yet, Guilty Gear Strive. So I really don't think she's ever gonna get a shot in Smash, sadly, if she's not even appearing without DLC in the main game that she's from. Since she's already from a fighting game, she transfers to Smash really well, and can still be a more ranged character using her signature rifles and shotguns, Miss Confile and Miss Travelier. And she's got a Rose Bouquet and a Cake Cutter now that she can use in her moveset too. For a Final Smash, Elfo could possibly have two Final Smashes like Ryu and Ken. Maybe Magnum Wedding for a long range Final Smash, and for a close range one, she can use the move Judge Better Half. I think Magnum Wedding would be more likely if she only got one Final Smash, but I just love her summoning a giant cake and slicing her opponents as well as the cake. Honestly, the main reason I want Elfo on Smash is because Smash is my favourite fighting game. I've never been good at learning combos in games like Guilty Gear or Street Fighter, and while they're fun for a change, I never really want to invest that much time into it. And it's just a fun occasional button masher kind of game for me. So I'd love my favourite characters from these other fighting games to appear in my absolute favourite fighting game. So I can play my favourite fighting game characters in my favourite fighting game. Now I know I'm going to get a lot of flack for this next pick, because everyone complains about how much Fire Emblem representation we already have in Smash, but it's my favourite series, and while I do think other series should get some more reps first, there's still some other Fire Emblem characters that I want. There was another Fire Emblem character I mentioned in my last Smash wishlist, 
and this time I'm going to be talking about my second favourite character from the series, Hilda from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now like Elfell, I really don't see Hilda getting in Smash probably ever. We've already just had a Fire Emblem rep in the first Fire Pass being Byleth. With Byleth's inclusion, I don't think we get another Three Houses rep. So instead of Byleth, what I really wanted was for Edelgard to be the Three Houses rep in the series, and have Hilda being her Echo Fighter for her, since it was really the only way I could see her being playable. They're both Axe users, and I could see them playing similarly. Maybe Hilda's the faster one of the two, but is easier to launch, or Edelgard is slower but is insanely tough to kill. They'd have some other differences too, like maybe one's different special move, but they'd both be pretty heavy hitters with high launching power. While they're fun characters to play, they're more just two characters I would have rather seen in Byleth than two characters to come from the Fighter Pass now. Besides, we haven't received a character and an Echo Fighter as one slot in the DLC yet, and I don't think we will in either of the last two slots too. Maybe one day in another Smash game, I could dream of us getting these two as playable characters, but by then there's probably going to be a new Fire Emblem game and probably a brand new Fire Emblem Sword Lord who grabs a space on the roster instead. I think for these next two picks, I'll cry if either of them get representation in Smash for the fantastic soundtrack alone. But aside from the soundtracks, I still really want to see them as playable characters. And the next pick for our first true mobile game rep is Yudin and Cleo from Dragalia Last. So this isn't a sort of duo hero like Ice Climbers or Pyramithra who works as a combo. These are just two separate characters. The thing is, if we get a Dragalia Last rep, I'm certain we get Yudin, but Cleo is my favourite character and the one who I really want. So while I'm hoping we get Yudin in Fighter Pass 2, I wanted to mention Cleo in a way, like, hey, I know she's not going to make it into the game, but hopefully she'll be the next rep in the series if we get another game in the future. Yudin, I'm guessing, will be a close range sword fighter, so you know people are going to complain about another anime sword fighter being added into the game. He can transform into dragons too, so maybe that'll be some kind of gimmick, and he'll transform into different dragons for his special smashes and final smash. For Cleo, she'd be more of a range attacker who battles with shadow magic, We'll probably have a healing gimmick where she can heal herself or heal allies when playing team battles, which would be really cool to see. Or she could be a stance change character maybe, changing the element she fights with to show the different elements in Dragalia Last. Fire, water, wind, light and shadow. Since she has an alternate appearance where she uses a water knife and wand, a light attribute bow, but her signature weapons are her shadow staff and her shadow wand. They both have some cool options for costumes too since they have their Gala outfits, which are basically their Evolved versions. And they have some more costumes from different events, like Christmas and Summer outfits too. Back to the soundtrack I mentioned before, it's just so good. Whenever there's a new raid event added to the game, there's always this hype as fuck anime intro kind of banger added to the game. And they could add so many different songs from the series. Some of my favourites are Get Up by Mad Kid, who did both of the Rise of the Shield Hero intros. We Are The Lights by Lucrezia, and Dawn Song from Hitomi Miyahara. If you haven't heard any of the songs before, then definitely go check some of them out. And check out Dragalia Last in general, since it's a super underrated game. I think that's enough gushing about Dragalia Last music, so let's start gushing about the music from the series featuring my number one character in this video is from. The last character is from a series I've been talking about a lot lately, and I've just finished a playthrough of the game over on Twitch. So let's move on to Neku from The World Ends With You. Now let's just get this part out of the way before moving on to the character. The soundtrack for the game is phenomenal, and it has the best soundtrack of any game I've ever played before. Literally just bring every song from this game into Smash, please. If this game gets the Cloud Smash 4 music treatment, I'd be so sad because there's a plethora of good songs from this game that I'd love to hear in the background. Neku is a really interesting character, and I feel like he'd be a great stance change character. In World Ends With You, you can't fight alone, and you have different partners throughout the game. So maybe the dance special changes which partner fights with you. You can fight with Shiki, Joshua, and Beat, who would all add very different moves into Neku's move pool. And I'm thinking it would change up Neku's specials, maybe smash attacks, and even his final smash. They could go crazy and give him 9 final smashes, based on each partner's level 1 through level 3 fusion skills. In World Ends With You, the more in sync you are with your partner, the more the fusion meter builds up with the fusion level attack increasing every 100% with 300% being the maximum. I'm thinking the longer Neku has one partner out, the higher the fusion level he'll get with that character. And it'll increase quicker when using that partner's moves, like in specials and smashes, but changing partner would reset the fusion percent. Your regular attacks could even do slightly more damage the more in sync you are with your partner Neku is, and it gives you options. 
You can either throw off your opponent by constantly switching your partner and diversifying your move ball, or you can stick to one partner and build up that sync meter. For the rest of his moveset, Neku can use a variety of different pins at his disposal. He can use elemental attacks, energy beams, psychokinesis, and even physical attacks like slashes and shoulder bashes, so there's no end to the ideas that could be put into a cool moveset for him. While I'd love to see him added into the game, with us already having a square weapon this pass with Sephiroth, it makes me really doubt that we'll see him put as a playable in this pass, unfortunately. But I'm still holding out hope with how much the world ends with you love the series is getting this year, that maybe, just maybe, the series could get a little bit more love and receive some representation in Smash. That's it for this video, so I'm hoping you really enjoyed it, my dudes. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe to see more, and comment below on who you'd like to see get added into the game, since hopefully we may know the last couple characters of a roster within the next month. I also have a Twitch channel and a Discord server linked to the description below, so if you want to watch me play games like Kingdom Hearts, Fire Emblem, and more, or you want to hang out with the community, then definitely go check out the links in the description for both. Also in the description is the links over for Jarrett's Twitter and YouTube, since he's edited this video and many other videos for me lately on the channel. So please check out his links in the description as well. Again, I really hope you enjoyed the videos, my dudes, and I'll see you in the next one. Until next time, bye.